So we have created various methods in our API to perform different operations on the city entity, but these methods are not secure. Anyone who has the endpoint URL uh, can perform any of the operation on the city entity. But we never want any anonymous user to have access to the all part of our application. For example, it would be okay to get cities anonymously, but we never want any anonymous user to be able to add or delete or update a city in our application. So in the next few video, we will see how to secure our web API. So first of all, let's see how to secure our API endpoint using authentication and authorization. I personally have taken many interviews and found that 90% freshers had no idea about the difference uh, between authentication and authorization. So first of all, it is important to understand the difference between both. So authentication is the process of obtaining uh, credentials from the user and using those credentials to verify that the user is valid or not. On the other hand, authorization uh, comes after authentication. This is the process of providing access to the different resources in our application uh, as per their rules. You can understand it by thinking authentication as the key of the main gate of an organization and authorization is the key of different cabins uh, within an organization. For example, uh, if you appoint a security guard for your building, you would like to provide him a key uh, to the main gate and security room, but you do not want him to give the key uh, to the lockers and cabins uh, in your organization. So basically, authentication is the key to the entry point uh, which validates the entry of a person and authorization is the key uh, to the internal resources in a system. So by authentication and authorization, we can make our system secure, uh, which helps to protect data theft by providing different keys uh, to different users as per their roles. So in any client server architecture where we want to protect the resources on the server uh, from unauthorized access, we first need to verify the user's identity uh, using some credentials like user ID and password. So once the user is verified, some unique ID is given to that user and the user is authenticated with that unique ID for all the subsequent requests. It is just like when you enter into any organization, the security guard provides you a temporary ID card uh, if you are a visitor and that identity card uh, gives you access to the different cabins in an organization. You do not have to provide your original ID further in the office. This unique ID is usually uh, stored in the memory at the server end and it is called session ID. This session ID is stored in the cookies at client end. This type of authentication is called session based authentication. But the problem with this approach is uh, for every user we have to store this session ID in the memory of our server. And because of that uh, scaling becomes an issue uh, when there is a huge number of users uh, using the system at once. Another problem uh, with this approach is uh, this session is uh, stored in cookies at client end and cookies are uh, normally stored on a single domain or subdomains. They are normally disabled by browser uh, and it creates issue when API and application are on uh, different domains. Also cookies are only available in browser and uh, chances are we want to build other types of application like iOS or Android app that consumes our web API. So with session based authentication, we are limiting our web API to be consumed on specific platforms. Also in session based authentication, we need to keep a live link uh, between client and server, but the API does not work in that way. Uh, we simply make a request to our API and uh, it returns data to us and our relationship to the API is uh, finished until we make another request. So this session based authentication is not a good approach uh, to work with web API. In that case, uh, what is the solution to these problems? Well, JWT based authentication is the solution to all of these problems. Let's understand what is JWT and how it works. JSON Web Token is an industry's open standard as mentioned in RFC 7519. And unlike a session ID uh, that is just a random unique ID, JWT uh, can contain the information about users uh, like user ID, roles, and any other information that we want to transmit uh, between client and API. 
means we do not need to go back to the database server or to fetch the user details and roles on every request and this information can be trusted because it is digitally signed using a secret key this secret key is only available with an authentication server uh, which certifies that only party holding that private key is the one uh, that signed it let's see how json web token look like in its compact form a json web token consists of three parts separated by dots header typically consists of two parts uh, the type of token which is obviously a jwt in this case and the signing algorithm uh, being used such as mse rsa or hs256 there are uh, many other uh, more algorithms are available and payload uh, contains the claims uh, claims are statement about an entity are uh, typically uh, the user and the additional uh, data about the user although the information provided in header and payload is protected against tampering uh, means if someone uh, try to modify any of this information jwt token uh, becomes invalid but we should not put a secret information in the payload and header element of jwt uh, because anyone can decode this information easily and the third part is signature uh, that really makes it trusted uh, it is created by combination of header and payload and the secret key uh, that is stored on the authentication server all these uh, three combinations are encoded and signed by the algo uh, specified in the header and the output jwt token are uh, created for this example will look something like this so with the jwt based authentication once the user credentials are verified the server uh, creates this jwt uh, with a secret and sends the jwt uh, to the client the client can store uh, this token usually in local storage on browser or any other medium uh, if it is a mobile app and every uh, subsequent request includes a token in the header the server then validate this token and sends a response back if this jwt is valid one thing to be noted here that we do not need to use cookies uh, to store and transmit this information instead we are passing uh, this token in header so we are not limiting our web api uh, for specific type of platforms and it can be consumed by multiple platforms another big difference here is that the user's uh, state is not stored on the server state is stored inside the token on the client side instead in that way we are making our application more scalable because we do not have to worry about storing session information in memory for every user the biggest advantage of jwt when compared to the session based authentication is that a jwt enables the delegation of authentication logic to a third party like ldap or auth0 which is very popular nowadays in this type of architecture a client can directly call a third party authentication service and get the json web token and that token can be passed to the web api server and the server should be able to validate this token generated by a third party because both of those share a common secret key and once the token is validated a web api should return the response to the client so hope you understand how jwt authentication works i uh, will see how to implement the same practically in our web api in the next video see you soon and wish you all a merry christmas